To thee we come, O Lord, our God, before thy altar, Father, thou knowest best our yearning hearts, then supplication answer, then offer what thy people, Lord, bless us our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice and now let us pause and confess our sins unto Almighty God and now let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take away our sins from us, O Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who has observed his law, Seek justice and humility. For the Lord takes away in his people, our is to war with victory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, is now, and shall be, for the Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory. To God in the highest, and peace with the honor. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receiving our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord our God, you scattered the proud in the conceit of their hearts. All their plans are brought to nothing. 
forgive our sins of pride that we may never despise our brothers and sisters but in love embrace all hopey people we ask this through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god forever and ever please be seated on this 22nd sunday in the ordinary we take the first reading from the book of Sarah. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourselves the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you seek not? Into things beyond your strength search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Amen. The response story. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God. Chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. The father of orphans and a defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. A bountiful rain you showered down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished. Your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. God, in your goodness, you gave a home for the poor. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could not be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and a storm, and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard beg that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels, and festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Alleluia. 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 The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and as an attentive ear is the wise man's joy. Alleluia. 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 Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him, Jesus, to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He, Jesus, said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. 
And he said to him, You have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the most known of all the parables of Jesus is that of the parable of the Good Samaritan. You can only imagine the volumes and the pages of commentary that have been written about this parable. And I'm sure that over the next years and decades, there'll be many more pages written interpreting the significance. But the parable of the Good Samaritan has a basis. It is the basis of our faith. It is the basis of our Judeo-Christian tradition. To reiterate, there's a story about A wise man who was a lawyer, the student of the law who understood the Torah. And he goes to Jesus and he says to Jesus, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now please understand that this lawyer, this gifted man and knower of the law, knew Holy Scripture. It was meant that every scholar, everyone who was to be a Pharisee or a Sadducee, even though they had differences in, in certain thoughts when it pertained to how man interpreted God, had the two commandments that Jesus asked the lawyer to tell him when asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This question is not a new question. 
Just think about the time that through the disobedience, Adam and Eve were cast from the garden. When they were in the, in the garden is what we call the Edenic state. They knew only God. They did not even have a knowledge of good and evil because they were in full communion with God. And at that time, they had eternal life as best as they understood being made in the image and the likeness of their creator. So this question goes back from the time that man was cast out from the Garden of Eden and meant to struggle through the centuries to try to recapture that Edenic state of being one with God. As I have said in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, we see man falling in consciousness from his co-union with God. And in the last book of the Holy Bible, the book of Revelation, we see Jesus as the blood of the Lamb, as the Lamb opened up Eden again, so that man could be one with God, that man could be reconciled to God, that man could be at one with God. The Jews, every single year, one of the most holy of all holy days in the Jewish calendar is known as Yom Kippur. And it is basically an offering that the Jewish people may have the atonement for their sins and that they might be one with God. We see Jesus. We hear that when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son into the world, born of a woman, and that he in turn, through that sacrifice, that perfect sacrifice, that sacrifice that was offered once and for all time, that was able to bring man back unto God. You know, Jesus talked about eternal life. We find it in Holy Scripture. He actually uses the word eternal life. First of all, we see John the Baptist. When he first lays eyes on Jesus, he says to those that were with him. Now you have to understand that John was a great teacher and he had many disciples. There is also an understanding that some of the disciples of Jesus were actually disciples of John. When John first saw Jesus, he said to everyone that was with him, Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. We know the importance of John the Baptist as being the forerunner, the one who was to usher in the Messiah. Again, Jesus talks himself about the gift of eternal life. This was at the Last Supper prior to him being arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Gospel of John, chapter 17, 1 through 5, we read, And Jesus, after he had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all those you have given him. And Jesus emphasizes by saying in the next verse, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I used to use the example of a window. 
in teaching catechism. And I would use three words, opaque, translucent, and transparent. Now opaque was the darkness that people lived in searching for God to try to be reestablished at that at one myth, one mint with God. The, rap, the, the prophets of the Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Micah, Amos, and all the others, they were translucent like a pane of glass. They were not completely in darkness, but God used these prophets to be his spokesmen. To speak not only about God, but also at the same time to usher in the one who was to come, as we find in the New Testament. The importance of John the Baptist, Jesus said, was the greatest of all prophets. And God had a divine plan by having John the Baptist usher in the ministry of his only begotten son. And so now we have transparent. Transparent, if you clean a window so well, it looks like there's no glass in it. That's Jesus. Jesus says to Philip, Have I been with you all this time, and yet you do not know me? For I say to you, whosoever has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus was the perfect transparency. And if anyone not wanted to know the attributes of God, of love, mercy, forgiveness, they would look to Jesus. Because Jesus was one with the Father, and he prayed that all of us may be one with the Father, as he is in the Father, the Father is in him, and that he is in us. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, when we're 20 years of age, we don't think about things such as eternal life. We have the world. We have all the things to look forward to. But there is a time that we get up in the morning and we realize our own finality. And maybe eternal life becomes a little bit more of a important question. What of eternal life? We all have that opportunity of eternal life. What of those who do not believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? He even spoke about that. He says, if you acknowledge me, I will acknowledge you before my Father. But if you do not, I will not acknowledge you. There is a price of everything that we have in our world. In eternal life, there is a price. But it was paid for by Jesus. And that we are given that opportunity of having eternal life if we strive to live the gospel is what we call a living gospel. What are the two commandments we teach in catechism? That Moses did give uh, Ten Commandments for morality, but the true essence, the spiritual essence, is summed up in two commandments, of which the lawyer knew, to love God and to love your neighbor. You know, in Judaism, the Shema is the foundation of the Jewish faith, and we find that important commandment in the fifth book of the Torah, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. The Shema begins with those scripture passages. And I invite you, if you have your Bible at home, to look up Deuteronomy 6 and continue past the fifth verse. The Shema begins with the following, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God and Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. 
The commandment of loving your neighbor as yourself is found in the book of the priests of what we know as the book of Leviticus. Chapter 19, verse 18, where God gives this command. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. We strive every day, my brothers and sisters, to love God and to love our neighbor. But it's not always easy. Because there's a certain degree of our, there's a certain degree of pride within each and every single one of us. There is that old self, which is the ego, that compares. Uh, he doesn't agree with my philosophy. He doesn't believe in, with my political aspirations. He is different from me. Well, my brothers and sisters, who is our neighbor? We are neighbors. Whether or not we like it or not, we all are on a common planet called Earth. And that we are called upon, if we are truly to seek to try to be righteous unto God, that we need to love God first and foremost, before everything else. And to seek not only love the Lord, but to seek Him daily to make an examination of conscience. To say before God, I fall every single day in sin, but I ask and I pray through the graces that you offer through your Son, Jesus Christ, to make me a better person and to try to live to a fuller degree of loving God and loving each other. And so, what shall I do, the lawyer asks. What shall we do to inherit eternal life? Search your conscience and understand that it is upon the love of God and love of neighbor that we are given that gift of eternal life. May we all be as that good Samaritan in that parable to understand that we have a commonality and that in times of need, we are called upon not to turn a blind eye, but rather to be one with God and to see God in all people. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified in the conscious Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you.
let us pray. Please be seated. The Lord guides the humble rightly and teaches the humble the way. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, grant that these gifts we now offer before you may become a heavenly healing and cleanse us from unseemly pride. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The whole Lord be with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, you who send us an advocate and a counselor in the person of the Holy Spirit to support us, teach us, and make us holy. Through your Holy Spirit, you give your gifts of grace in every time and in every season as a guide for your holy church. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, 
and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our intentions, let us pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are still suffering from the coronavirus, and pray for their health, as well as for the wellness of their families. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers. In our deepest prayers this day, let us remember all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals, creatures of God, and all those who suffer violence in their lives, both here and abroad. May we thank God this day for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces and pray that Almighty God might send his holy angels to watch over, to protect, and to return them to their families. May we pray this day for the people of Ukraine and peoples around the world who seek peace and justice. And we also pray this day for all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands. And having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his heavenly Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest, the Lizadek, offered you a holy sacrifice of Magdalene host. We humbly ask you all, mighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive from this altar the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, delight, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not doing our merits, but parting our offenses, through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Please be seated. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter, Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration
celebration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vow safe to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. which I will return unto the Lord for all the graces he has rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, call upon the name of the Lord with high praise, while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord,
Finally, all of you be of one mind, sympathetic, loving toward one another, compassionate, humble. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, enliven with the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Give us a humble and a tender spirit that we may think less of ourselves, more of others, and most of all of you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and our one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Go, the sacrifices are offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I have, though unworthy, offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. And through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light, the light for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name. For begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 